Welcome to another episode of the Silk Rider Maintenance Series. And we have the 2020 KTM 450 EXCF here. Uh, today, uh, we're gonna talk about valve clearances, checking them and adjusting them if necessary. And I'm also gonna tell you about a really helpful thing uh, that I recently found, um, and that's uh, obtaining service manuals for KTMs and any other KTM brands like Husqvarna or Gas Gas. Uh, before I, I, I used the website actually I found on Google from searching uh, to get the uh, manual but it was from the 2019 model not the 2020 uh, but apparently KTM has it buried in their website uh, you don't have to go to your dealer you don't have to ask them to print you out anything all you have to do is go to print.ktm.com and put your VIN number in or you can search for your bike and literally they have uh, obviously owner's manuals which come with the bike, you don't necessarily need that, those are free. But you can also get the service manual, uh, you have to pay for those. The digital version, I think it's you know 15, maybe 12 euros or dollars. Uh, you can also order a, a, a physical copy which they'll ship straight to you and that's probably, that's more expensive. Uh, there's a slight differences in the 2019 and 2020. I noticed for things like the valve, there's there's uh, there's a couple things in there that are, that are changed from year to year. Not huge differences. Uh, if you have a 2019 manual, it's completely sufficient. Things like the valve clearance are something that uh, you don't do as often as an oil change. This bike has almost 100 hours, and I'm doing I'm adjusting the valve shims the first time. So my valve shims lasted a long time. Uh, they just started to uh, wear to the point where I need to change them. So uh, yeah, I mean, brand new bike, 100 hours. So that's how long they lasted me. All right, so again, this is gonna be all stuff that I take directly from the manual. Um, obviously we have the tank removed here and the radiator scoops and the seat. If you don't know how to do that, you shouldn't be doing valve clearances. So have the tank removed uh, and we're gonna start with basically uh, step-by-step as in the manual, um, once you have the fuel tank off, you're gonna have access to the valve cover. The important thing here is that you have a clean bike. So um, not just clean uh, from dirt on the wheels and stuff, but clean uh, up in this area, because what happens is you don't wanna take the valve cover off and have all the dirt and crap get into the engine, okay? You wanna keep that as clean as possible. So have some compressed air. If you don't have compressed air, have the tank off when you're cleaning it so that you get the, you know, whatever you have, a brush or sponge, however you clean your bike, um, and get the get the grime out of this area. There's a, basically a wiring loom in here, a wiring harness that, a tr that uh, can get a lot of mud caked in there. So I'm using compressed air today, but uh, just make sure everything is as clean as you can get it because you don't want specks of dirt getting into here. This is uh, this is precision machinery, but this is the valve train. So you don't want that getting grimed up. It's just gonna increase the wear on your engine. It's gonna get in your cylinder. All right, next thing is uh, we're gonna remove the valve cover depending on which year your bike is. You're gonna have three or four. 2020 has three, I believe the 2019 has four. And when you get these out, make sure you pull them out and you take out the rubber grommets that come with them, all right? Pull off your spark plug connector. and we're gonna remove the spark plug. Now the reason we want the spark plug off is essentially we're gonna put a hole into the engine basically where the spark plug was to reduce, uh, to eliminate the compression we have uh, so that we can get top dead center. So we're gonna uh, remove the spark plug and when we remove the valve cover, this will make it easier essentially to get top dead center because it's gonna be easier to turn the wheel and the uh, the cylinder is going to move a little bit more freely. All right, next step before we pull this cover off 
is we're gonna remove the breather hose. And all you're gonna need is a pair of pliers for that. Uh, there's a spring clamp here. Just grab onto that nice and firmly. Pull it back. There you go. And off comes the valve cover. Now you're gonna have a gasket, uh, an outer gasket, and you're gonna have a gasket here, uh, which is for the breather hose, okay? So keep those in place. These generally don't have to be replaced uh, every time you take it off because it's a rubber gasket. Uh, these are pretty hardy. Uh, they essentially just wear out over time. Um, they get brittle and uh, hard. So uh, first, you know, 100, 200 hours probably, you're gonna be fine. All right, now that we have the valve, the valve cover off, uh, we're gonna need to get it into top dead center. Um, so this is another spot where the manual, the service manual for your bike is pretty essential um, because what you need to do is line up uh, markings on the valve train uh, with a, in, in a certain location. So uh, with the 2020 KTM 450 XCF, there's a mark right here okay you see that right underneath the uh, valve chain okay so it's not this one that you can see right here it's this one and we need to get this mark uh in the center of this sort of uh in this position okay what we're going to do to do that is switch the bike into the highest gear that's first. All right, and we're almost there, but I'll give it a couple turns so you can see this happen. So in the highest gear, it's really easy to turn. And there we go. That's pretty much perfectly top dead center. Now, what that's gonna give you now is a little bit of play in the rockers, the valve rockers. So these are your camshafts going through here. Sorry, your camshaft is down here. Your rockers are on these shafts. Uh, so with the valves, uh, with the piston at top dead center, with the engine at top dead center, you can confirm that by giving these wiggles, okay? Uh, because you need a little bit of clearance. And what we're gonna measure here is the distance between this rocker and basically the shim that's sitting on top of the valve. Um, before we do that, we need to do one more thing. So we're gonna come around to the other side of the engine and we're gonna have to unscrew this and remove the washer. And this is basically the locking screw. Uh, it locks the engine in place so that we're not gonna lose the top dead center. So in case we turn the wheel or whatever, We're gonna take the screw out, remove the washer, okay, and screw it back in. Oil will come out. And we're gonna tighten it. And that's gonna lock our engine in place so that we can work on the valves without worrying about the, them getting back out of top dead center. Don't tighten it uh, too hard, just hand tighten it. Okay, so we have top dead center. The engine's locked in top dead center. Now we can finally get to the, I guess, grand finale. Um, special tool time. We need a feeler gauge. Okay, this is a super cheap tool. You can uh, get it at uh, hardware stores or your bike shop. Um, Get a good quality one because this is a precision instrument you need to have a precision uh measurement uh and you know if you have a crappy chinese version that doesn't have the sizes perfect you know you're not going to get an accurate measurement now this one uh, you can see has various thicknesses and as a feeler gauge essentially what it's doing is each 
each of these metal uh, strips is a certain thickness. So we have 0 0.08 millimeters, 0 0.09 millimeters, 0.15 millimeters. And the cool thing about this is you can combine them because since you see we don't have everything in between, we have five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, I think we have 10, all right? But then we don't have an 11, 12. We don't have anything between 10 and 15. And then it goes straight from 15 to 20 and then 25 and it goes by fives. But what we can do here is basically just combine, for example, if we wanna get, if we wanna get 12.12, uh, .12, um, we can combine the, uh, here's my math here, the five and the seven, right? So uh, we'll take the five and the seven, put those together, and, and we can now feel with these two together to get 12. So you're gonna need the manual to tell you what the valve clearances should be at the intake and at the exhaust. Uh, for this bike, that's 0.10 to 0.15 millimeters at the intake and 0.12 to 0.17 millimeters at the exhaust. And important note, that measurement is at 20 degrees Celsius. Uh, that's just, you know, an engineering standard. Um, you wanna measure take precision measurements of engine parts at a temperature that is not too cold, not too hot. Um, because I think, I think at, uh, differences of 20 degrees or 10 degrees, even you get, you get, uh, variances of maybe 0 0.01 or 0 0.05 millimeters difference. Um, and obviously when the engine is, is running and it heats up, uh, things expand. So those clearances also shrink. So everything is set up, um, and written down in the manual also so that you check at a certain temperature so that when the, when the engine is hot, uh, those are going to change obviously. So you don't want to do this with a hot engine. You don't want to do it with a freezing engine either. If you're at a room temperature, uh, you know, and maybe you have AC or something, you're going to be around 20 C. That's fine. If it's off by five degrees, you're not going to, you're not going to, uh, worry about that. So let's start with the intake side. Now we said between 10 uh, 0.10 and 0.15 millimeters, right? So I want to find my 10. I want to start with the lowest one because I think I already know I'm, uh, I think I'm tight on my, uh, my clearances. So what you're going to do is you're going to take one of the feeler gauges, uh, start with, um, a higher thickness. I want to try 10. Okay. And you're going to basically put it in there between the rocker and the valve. Okay. And basically you just feel whether or not, uh, the, uh, there's drag on the feeler gauge and there should be slight drag. This is actually loose. Let me go back to 15. I can't remember where I was. So let's try 15 now on the intake. And that is not gonna get in there, okay? That's too tight. Okay, that feels like that's a 12. All right, now, as you're doing these measurements, uh, hugely important thing, this isn't optional. You have to write these down, okay? So you're gonna have to make a table. Let's see. You're gonna have to have the intake and exhaust and left and right sides. You have to write this down because you have to know what shims you need and where you're gonna put them. And you're also gonna to have to monitor this through time. Um, basically what you're gonna see over time, uh, depending on what's going on with your engine, but let's start from scratch. If we have a new bike, in my case, for example, these uh, shims, uh, these valve clearances are getting tighter as the bike, as the engine ages, as I'm using it more. The reason that is, is we see the valve here uh, behind inside of the spring. So what's happening is the valve uh, uh, face, obviously inside the cylinder above the piston, that is um, slowly wearing down as the valve goes up and down. And the metal sort of essentially, you know, gets shaved or flattened away uh, and what happens is that valve in here, it's millimeter by millimeter. Let's, we're, we're talking hundreds of a millimeter, um, pushing up higher into the, into the rocker. 
And that's why the clearances here are getting tighter over time. Uh, if they're getting tighter, that means your valve face is wearing. That's normal. That's why we do this. And you're going to have a tighter clearance. What does that mean if it's, tight? It's, it's too tight? That means that if it's too tight and you have no clearance here, the engine heats up, that clearance becomes even tighter because, remember, metal expands when it's hot. And you're going to basically eventually have a stuck open valve. If this, is, uh, if this has no clearance, for example, and you can't get anything in there, and the engine is hot and it's running, this is never going to fully close. So remember, when, it, when the valve is all the way up, it's closed. Um, if this is, there's no clearance there and it's not fully closed, you're going to have a crack. You're going to have basically poor performance because there's gases escaping or coming into the valve. This is the intake side. And that's why we would, in that case, need a thinner shim in case of a tight clearance. Now, as we have about 0.13 on the intake side, that's within the range of between 0.10 and 0.15. So 0.13 on the intake is good. Remember, the exhaust has to be between 0.12 and 0.17. Okay, so once we know what uh, clearances we have, and if we need to adjust the clearances by changing the shims, we're going to have to take the rocker arms off and get to basically... Uh, get this guy out of here. Okay, so uh, first thing we're gonna do is take off the camshaft retaining bracket, which is two screws here, and we're gonna take out the rocker arms uh, with these two screws. All right, now that we have the retaining screws removed, we can remove the uh, rocker arm guides. And if you, if you notice, I mean, they're pretty much stuck in there. Um, the only way to take those out is you need an M6 screw that actually screws into there uh, to pull out. Now M6, you can get that right off of your radiator supports. So you need to take those off anyway. Uh, these, these are the, uh, the ones that hold your uh, what is it called? The radiator scoop, the plastic. So just take one of those, screw that into here, not all the way. You're going to have to bite onto it with uh, some pliers. But all we need to do is get enough thread in there. Take some adjustable pliers or whatever tool works best for you. And we're going to tug those out. There's one, and the rocker arm just sort of fell off. And the second one comes right out. All right, now these do have, uh, these two rocker arm um, supports, they are uh, unique to the sides they're on. So if you wanna be extra careful, remember how you took them out, but I have a easy way of identifying which one goes where and in what position when we put this all back together. All right, finally, we can remove our rocker arms. Now do this carefully so you do not drop anything inside of the cylinder. So your shims are in there. Make sure those are hanging around, hanging out in there and not loose and about to fall out. Carefully lift out the rocker arms. Again, these only go in one position. 
So if you want to be extra careful, just uh, make sure you know which way they go, but you can't put them in uh, the wrong way anyway. All right, so it's special tool time again. First one is gonna be uh, a pen magnet. You need this to pull these uh, shims out. So the shims are sitting inside the valve, uh, the valve spring, okay? That just pops right out. Now, let's say uh, we checked our valve clearances. Um, mine were too tight on the exhaust. Uh, basically, they're at the right at the end of the bottom of the range, which is what's 0.11 and 0.12, which is just pretty much right off. Um, now, when you order your new valves, or you go and buy your new, uh, I'm sorry, valve shims, uh, what valve shims do you want to buy? Well, uh, for me, since I'm getting tighter, um, I'm going to go back to the top of the range and basically get uh, the intake as close to 0.15 and the exhaust as close to 0.17. Now, how do you do that? Well, we have another special tool that we're going to need. And that is our uh, micrometer. Okay. Uh, can't do without any of these tools. Okay. You're going to have to have these. These are precision tools. They're super useful if you're working on your engine. Zero it out and you're gonna to have to get a precise measurement of your current uh, valve shim. Okay, so I measured each one of these, and so you can see I have point, uh, I have 2.44 thereabouts for this one. And you're gonna do that to each valve shim. And again, you're gonna write that down. Let's take a look at how we decide what our new shim sizes should be to replace our old shims. And in order to do that, all we need to have is an easy math formula. And we just need to plug in the recorded valve clearances that we got uh, using our feeler gauges initially when we measured the valves. We need to subtract the specified valve clearance that we want to have, which is from the manual. And we want to add to that the thickness of our old shims, which we got by measuring them with our calipers. So let's plug in the values that we got. And the first one we did was the intake. And remember we measured the valve clearances of the intake. So the right side we had 0.12 and we want to achieve 0.15 millimeter valve clearance. So that's the second value, and the last value is the thickness of the shim that's in place right now. So if you solve this little equation, you're gonna get 2.31 millimeters, and if, if you're looking at KTM original shims, those come in intervals of 0.02 millimeters. So in our case, I rounded up to 2.32 millimeters. For the left side, we got a nice round number of 2.28 millimeters, which doesn't require any rounding. And finally, for the exhaust, it's the same exact equation, except remember to plug in the specified clearance from the exhaust side, which in our case is 0.17 millimeters if you're aiming for the top of the range. Now, solve those equations, get your shim sizes, your new shim sizes, and do the necessary rounding to get you within the range that you want, uh, the specified range. Uh, don't go over uh, 0.1 millimeters is not gonna make a big difference, but this is basically the required work you'll need to get your new shims uh, either ordered or if you have a whole bunch of them you know, uh, in, a, in, in a big box. This is what you're gonna have to do to get your new shim sizes and also remember to place them in the right spot that uh, uh, you specified in the table. So exhaust the intake left and right sides. So uh, obviously with your written down values for your new valve shims, uh, get those back onto your uh, pen magnet and uh, put them right back into the positions that you wrote down earlier that you need them in. And they're all in. Now we can proceed to reassembly. 
of the rocker arms and we're gonna check the valve clearances one more time, put it back together, put the valve cover on and then we're done. So this is the position you want your rocker arms in if you're on the left side of the bike. Put those in roughly into place while we go get our uh, rocker arm shafts. All right, now we have our rocker arm shaft. So which which side goes where in what direction? Well, we know this, the uh, screw hole goes on the outside. Now, the for the 2020 bike, it's different for the 2019, but uh, again, this is a, a point from the service manual. You can see the difference here uh, is that there is a lubrication bore on this one. And, and the one with lubri lub the lubrication bore, which is that big sort of bored out hole, uh, it's only on one of these. That's the intake side, okay? And orientation wise, we want the cutout, which is this part, to face upward. And so that means we're going to put it right in here. All right, and those are in. Now we're just gonna screw these in with the retaining screws here and, re and uh, replace the retaining bracket for the camshaft with the screws. And we're gonna put the valve cover back on. Actually, we're gonna do the valve clearances again, check them again, and we're done. Okay, all these retaining screws are with a 15 Newton meter torque setting. Make sure you actually take out the retaining screw, uh, the uh, the holder screw, I guess you'd call it, far enough so that you can get these screws in, the retaining screws in. But I like to keep those, uh, the holding screw around so I can position it well. Fifteen. 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 All right, let's check the valve clearances. All right, so just checking these valves last time before we put it together to make sure we're inside of our tolerances. And looks like the exhaust right is perfectly at 17. And the exhaust left should be 16. Yep, and that's 0.16. And my intakes are perfect as well. They're 0 0.14 to 0 0.15 each. So these are good to go for another, who knows, maybe another 100 hours. Uh, so we're going to put the valve cover back on, connect the spark plug, uh, remove the locking TDC lock, and then we're done. And we're going to tighten this to 10 Newton meters and the uh, spark plug and the valve cover is actually pretty much the same. So that's not tight at all. Make sure you have everything connected here. I think my oil pressure sensor was disconnected so I can get to better access. Put that back in. We're going to put our valve cover back into place. Do make sure your gaskets are positioned correctly, and this one is uh, firmly seated so it doesn't fall out into your engine. Okay.
And finally, we want to put the vent hose back into position. Now, with the spark plug, actually, I decided I'm going to change it to a new one. Um, the differences aren't that bad. Uh, the only difference is the old one. Uh, there's a little bit of fouling around the tip. And it it's just probably going to start to get uh, um, the gap between the electrodes might just start uh, closing up. And uh, anyway, a new spark plug is only going to improve the ignition and uh, and uh, also require less voltage to the ignition coil. So changing these every 100 hours or until you see some fouling and wear isn't a bad idea. All right. Connect our spark plug lead. All right, and that's the job done. So that was not that hard. Uh, the main thing that you have to watch out for when doing this kind of job is write all the clearances down. Make sure you keep a log of what your valve clearances are over time. And uh, yeah, you're gonna have to do a little bit of math to figure out what you're gonna, what shims you're gonna put in. Um, so as long as you have that log, and as long as you have everything written down uh, and organized, you don't lose place of which shim goes where, you'll be fine. So prepare for that ahead of time. And uh, yeah, easy as pie. So let me know in the comments if uh, you were able to do this yourself. If you have any questions or if you have trouble along the way, uh, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and happy riding.